Welcome to another Fast Tips video brought to you by ExcelLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to calculate your U.S. federal income tax with Microsoft Excel using progressive tax brackets. And even if you're outside the United States, as I know a lot of you are, many countries do also use a graduated or progressive tax system like this. So if you want to learn how this stuff is calculated, stay tuned. Before we get started, however, we're going to use the XLOOKUP function in Excel. It was added in 2019, I believe. So if you're not familiar with XLOOKUP, go watch this video. I'll put a link down below. You can click on it and go watch it. XLOOKUP is a new relative, a distant cousin, I guess you could say, of VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP. So if you know how to use VLOOKUP, it's very similar. But XLOOKUP is a lot more powerful. So go watch this video first. All right, so what are tax brackets? The United States and a lot of other countries use what's called a progressive tax bracket system, which means that each level of your income is taxed differently. For example, up to, let's say, $10,275, you're just taxed at 10% of your taxable income. Now, taxable income doesn't include things like deductions and that, which, which can bring down your taxable income. We're not going to get into deductions today. And a bit of a disclaimer, I'm not an accountant. I'm a computer nerd. So I'm just going to show you the math behind this do not construe this as legal or tax advice. I'm just showing you how to do some basic calculations, okay? Okay, so anything you make beyond 10275 up to 41775 is taxed at 12%. So the more you make, each level gets taxed differently. All right, so if you do make, let's say, $600,000, the whole thing isn't taxed at 37%, right? The first 10275 is taxed at 10%. Then the next 30000 or so is taxed at 12% and so on up the list. All right, that's how that works. So even though you're making 600000 your effective tax rate is lower because this is all taxed lower. And then there's something called the marginal tax rate, which that is the last dollar. So your marginal tax rate would be called 37%, but your effective tax rate is lower. And then there's, of course, deductions. So there's all kinds of other ways to get around paying all that tax. But... This is just the basic calculation. I'm showing the 2022 federal income tax brackets for people who are filing single. There are different brackets available for people who are married, filing jointly, filing separately, and head of household. Here's a link where I got this stuff. You can just Google it. You can find all kinds of stuff. I'll put a link to this down below as well. This is NerdWallet's site. I come here all the time. I like NerdWallet. All right, here's the... Single filers, down here you got married filing jointly, and the brackets are all slightly different. They give you benefits if you're married, they give you benefits if you're head of household, and so on. But just to keep things simple, we're going to calculate for single filers. All right, so let's open up our handy-dandy Excel, and let's put those income brackets in the spreadsheet. Now, I've already done the work of typing all this in. I'm not going to make you sit here and watch me do it, so we're going to copy and paste it from my other sheet. <laughs> Here's the income level, right? That's the minimum amount of income that you need to make to fall into that bracket. All right, so if you make 50000 you fall into this bracket here, okay? Where did I get that? This chart right here, all right, straight from the IRS. So if you make 50000 you fall into that bracket. So your income level, right, the minimum amount to fall into that bracket is 41776 If you make that much then you pay a base tax amount of that, 4807.50, plus 22% of the amount over 41. So basically you take your actual income, let's say 50,000, subtract that, and then you pay 22% of that amount plus this base amount. See how that works? So if you made $100,000 of taxable income last year, you'd fall into this bracket, Okay, you'd pay a base amount of 15213 plus 24% of the difference between 100000 and 89075. That's how you calculate that, okay? So here is each bracket. Here's the minimum amount of income that you need to fall into that bracket. There's the base amount of tax that you're going to pay, plus there's the tax rate that you're going to pay on the difference between what you actually made, and that lower income bracket level. All right. So as long as we're on the same page, now we're going to come over here. We're going to put in income. And here's what we'll type in your income. Let's start with $32,000. Okay. Now the first step is to find the bracket that you fall in. So we're going to get the base amount that you're going to have to pay using XLOOKUP. 
All right, so it's going to be equals x lookup. Now, the first thing is the lookup value. What value are you looking up in that table? Well, the value is right there. Okay, that's our lookup value. Comma. Lookup array. Where is the list of data that you're trying to look up that value in? Well, I'm looking it up over here in this income level. So I'll select those cells right there, A2 to A8. Okay. Comma. What's the return array? Now, the return array says matching this list here, what value do you want to bring back? Well, that's the base tax. I want to start with that base tax. So in other words, it's going to try to find the value in that lookup array. All right, let's say it finds this one. And then it brings back the matching one in the return array. In other words, the, the, the value in the same row, you could think of it. Okay. Comma. If not found is the value that is not found in that. Don't worry about that for this example. Comma, again, you want the match mode. Now, we don't want an exact match because that number is not going to exactly fall in there. Okay? We want to find the next smaller item. We want to find what item we fall underneath. Okay? So put that in there. That'll be a minus one. And then we don't need to worry about search mode. Close up the parentheses and then press enter. And there we go. So what did X look up do here? Well, it looked up, it tried to find this number, 32,000, in this list, okay? And it wants to find the value that's smaller than that. That's that option that we picked, all right? So, okay, that's smaller than that. That's also smaller than that. That's too big, so go back one to that one there. So it brought back the value that's in the same row as that, see? That's where I got that number from, okay? That's how X lookup works. And again, I explain a lot better in the XLOOKUP video if you want to learn more about how XLOOKUP works. Okay, next up, we're actually going to bring back that minimum income level number. So I'm just going to put minimum over here. And it's very similar to what we just did, equals XLOOKUP. All right, what value are we looking up? Same value, comma, the lookup array, same spot, comma. This time, I wanted to return the actual value from that column. So I'll select this a second time, okay? comma, comma, match mode, exact match, or next smaller item, tab, and then enter. And there you go. So it looked up this value again in this column, and this time it's actually going to return that income level because we need that to do the subtraction. Okay, next we need the tax rate from that row. So the rate, same thing, equals X lookup. What value are we looking up? That guy, comma, What's the lookup array? We're looking it up in that table right there, in that column, comma. What's the return array? This time it's the tax rate, comma, comma, exact match or next smaller item, and then enter. So you're in the 12% bracket, okay? So now we have all the data we need to actually calculate the tax due. All right, and this is going to be equals the base tax that we got to pay plus it's going to be the difference between what we actually made our income minus that minimum value which is that guy times the tax rate okay and then press enter and there's the amount that you owe okay and you can change this value up. Let's put 50,000 in there. Press enter. All the, all the X lookups change, and your new amount of tax due is 6616. And the IRS only really cares about dollar amounts, so you can actually round that value, round that whole thing to zero decimal places. There you go. And if you want to figure out a bunch more, you could put something in here like this. You could do 75,000. Okay. Now, can we just autofill all this stuff over? Uh, no, it doesn't look right. Why? Well, because autofill is changing our references up here. So in order to do that, we have to use absolute references for those arrays or named arrays, whichever one you prefer. So I'm going to come up here and go F4 on each of these. F4, F4, F4. See that? That way it says don't move that box. Always keep it in that same spot. But F4 can slide over. The actual, the actual cell F4. I'm pressing F4 on my keyboard. That's relative versus absolute references. I'll put a link down below to a video where I talk about that. All right, same thing for this one here. 
F4, 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 enter. Same thing for the rate. And this basically just tells Excel, hey, if I autofill this guy, don't move that reference. Leave it right there. And that one's all fine. All right, so now I should be able to grab these, slide it over, and there you go. If I do another one, do 100,000, I can slide it over again. There we go, because those F4s keep that reference in the same spot. That's called an absolute reference. There we go. Add a splash of color, and you can see everything is working just fine. And that's how you calculate your progressive tax rates. So that's your fast tip for today for Excel. And if you don't know me, my specialty is actually Microsoft Access database development. Yes, I love Excel, but Access is where the real power is. So I've got a fast tip to show you how to do the same thing in Microsoft Access. I'll put a link to that down below as well. So that's it. Want to learn more Excel? Be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Stop by my website to watch my free Excel Level 1 course. It's over 90 minutes long and it covers all the basics. And if you want me to post more Excel videos, I need to hear from you. About 90% of what I do is Microsoft Access, but I'm also a published Excel author and I love Excel. So if you want to see me post more free Excel videos, post a comment below and let me know. Say, hey, I want more Excel.